Hi, how are you? I'm Anthony from Cypher House, and today I wanted to release a new video onto YouTube. I know I haven't made a video on YouTube in a while, but we just passed the 500 subscribers mark, and so I wanted to commemorate the occasion by making a video that I've always wanted to make. As I've mentioned over on my Twitch channel, I have been attempting to solve the listener crossword puzzle every week within a couple days of it being released. The listener crossword is a very challenging cryptic crossword puzzle that comes out every Friday. Listeners often include a variety of archaic and challenging words and definitions that wouldn't be the first one that would come to mind when thinking about what a word means. And so I've been enjoying the additional challenge of tackling these once a week and starting to learn the ins and outs of how some of these more difficult puzzles work. Since the listener is such a challenging crossword puzzle, it's rare for me to sit down and solve the entire thing in one sitting. I've attempted to do that a number of times over on Twitch and almost every single time we've cut the stream halfway through the puzzle and picked it up at a later date. So I don't think these videos are going to be cold solves of me going through the listener crossword puzzle because I just don't think I have the stamina or the capability to just sit down and solve one of these things straight through on camera. So instead what this series is going to be is more of a brief rundown of how I solved the puzzle and what order I kind of filled in the grid. I'm not going to go step by step through every Every single thought that I had while solving the puzzle, but I'll give a rough chronology of the order that I solved the clues and the way that the grid looked as I slowly worked my way through. I'll be talking, of course, about the theming and the meta that every single puzzle has involved within it, and I'll be discussing my final thoughts uh, at the end of each video as to what I thought about the puzzle. Today we're going to be taking a look at listener number 4799, Don't Get Em Wrong by Ploy. This puzzle came out on Friday, January 19th of 2024, and it just occurred to me to start making these videos the following Thursday. Uh, January 25th, so it's been almost a week since I solved this puzzle already, but I'm going to do my best to talk about my thoughts and how I went through the solve here. The grid looks fairly normal. We have all of the numbers where they're supposed to go. The instructions read, some clues need a letter either removed or added to enable solving. So in the actual clue, we're going to have to remove or add a letter somewhere in order for the clue to be solved. These letters are jumbles of two thematic properties. So the letters that get removed will be jumbled into something and the letters that get added will be jumbled into something. Some other clues answers need a corresponding adjustment to produce the real word grid entry. Now, as I was first going into this puzzle, I had no idea what that meant. Uh, I actually decided I was going to avoid any adjustments until the very end because I the instructions don't talk about what that is, and that's for a very good reason. The remaining 26 clues, the letter at positions given by the number of vowels in their answers, spells a description of the whole puzzle. So if an answer has three vowels in it, and that's what we put in the grid, is that answer with the three vowels, we're going to count into that clue and in, in index, essentially, the third letter from that clue. And we're going to figure out what all of that means later, but of course when I first read it I had no idea what that meant, which is part of the fun of a listener, is that the instructions usually make no sense at all <laughs> until uh, you've solved a good portion of the puzzle. So I converted the puzzle here into Google Sheets, and this is where I'm going to be uh, going through my solve. The very first clue that I solved in the puzzle was 21 down. The clue reads, Frank Autocrat tops founder of Quebec. And to me, the phrase founder of Quebec was just kind of goofy, because I said certainly that's not, you know, actually asking us to discover the founder of Quebec. Maybe founder means take the first letter of Quebec. Maybe uh, there's some other wordplay going on here, but just out of curiosity, I googled founder of Quebec, and it turned out that was actually the answer. The Quebec was founded by a person by the name of Champlin, and the wordplay for this clue is um, Frank is plain. If you're being plain with somebody, you're being honest, you're frank with them. And autocrat, cham, C-H-A-M, is a word that means um, an autocrat, and I just know that one because I looked it up in uh, chambers after noticing the plane and Frank connection. So um, this one happened to be the first clue that I solved, and since Champlin has three vowels, the A, A, and I, we index in and take the third letter of 21 down, which is an A over here in Frank. Usually when I'm solving a puzzle off stream just for fun, I don't require myself to look at all of the clues in order or to try to build off of things that I previously fit into the grid. I just kind of 
let myself skim over the clues, usually looking at the shorter ones because they tend to be on the easier side, usually looking for a few keywords that tend to stand out in an easier clue, and I'll talk about one of those examples in a minute. These were all normal clues, so I was just extracting the indexed letters as I went, but it was fairly early on that I actually found my first clue that was missing a letter. That clue is 41 across. SA rowers yield it, it's even in saccharin. Even is one of those usually easy to spot keywords that tends to indicate a familiar type of wordplay. When I see even, I assume that we're taking the even letters from something, in this case the even letters from saccharin, and that spells A-C-A-I, a kai, which is uh, a fruit, and I was familiar with this word, so I was able to recognize that it was um, quite possibly something of interest here. Now, the reason that this clue doesn't quite work on its own is because a definition for a kai isn't S-A rowers yield it, but it would be a good definition if we added a G in front of rowers to get S-A growers. According to Chambers, a kai is a small purple fruit of South America, so those who are growing in South America could produce a kai. So we are missing a G in this case. Um, and that's one of the letters that we have to add back into the clues. So I uh, keep track of where all the clues go, and I keep track of all the different letters <laughs> that we use. Usually when I'm just kind of looking through the puzzle, solving what I can, an area or section of the puzzle emerges that seems to be easier than the other areas. In this case, the top left part of the grid turned out to be uh, one of the easier sections. The whole left side, really, was a little bit easier, and you'll see that I start to fill it in um, quicker than some of the stuff on the right. But in particular, the stuff that uh, I had already gotten from the normal clues here allowed me to get a couple more added letter clues. Next up was 14 across, huge body of ore found in secret enclave. I noticed based on the letter pattern blank T blank N that the word E-T-E-N, etin, is actually a hidden word here, and so I had to look up the definition of this word etin, and it's an archaic word for giant. So I didn't know quite where or came in until I remembered that the listener crossword likes to indicate when a word is marked as archaic in the dictionary with a similarly historic sounding word, kind of like an indicator word for the wordplay, except it actually goes to the definition. So a huge body is a giant, that's the normal definition, but since this is an archaic word, it's a huge body of your. So we have actually have to add a Y into here. I don't quite remember at what point I started thinking about 12 down. So let's talk about that one because it's kind of interesting. The clue reads, for very active state, bats decent sixes. I was able to parse pretty early on that decent sixes is exactly 11 letters. And if you anagram it, you get excitedness, which could have the definition of a very active state. So the only thing that I had to rationalize was, does bats mean anagram? Is bats an anagram indicator? But for whatever reason, as I was going through, I just didn't trust it. And I think the reason is, I thought beats, B-E-A-T-S, was a much better anagram indicator. And so I wasn't sure if I should be treating this as a normal clue or if I was adding a letter, because to me it could be solved either way. I didn't know the answers to any of that at the time, so I just decided to mark this one with a bit of a question mark. With all of the progress that I was making in the upper left-hand section of the grid, I was able to solve my first removed letter clue as well. That clue is one down, antelope being eaten by beast shot. Based on the letter pattern of one down, I found that one particularly enticing answer possibility is uh, the word T-S-E-S-S-E-B-E, -E -S -S -E -E, which I have no idea how that's pronounced, but according to Chambers, this is a word for a specific kind of South African antelope. I also know from solving previous listener crossword puzzles that being, a Latin word for being, is E-S-S-E, -S -S -E, and I saw that was uh, in the middle of this word here, and so that just leaves eaten by beast shot. After thinking about that for a moment, I realized that shot is an anagram indicator and beast is actually supposed to just be best because we have those letters anagrammed around the outside of the word here. So we have to remove the A 
in order to uh, solve this clue. Uh, things like 11 across, I had all of the crossing letters for, including the E from uh, 12 down, which I strongly su suspected was uh, excitedness. Um, but I could not find any word that fit this letter pattern and had anything at all to do with the definition. And since I knew that there were going to be some adjusted entries, I suspected this might have been one fairly early on. Uh, and just decided to leave it until I had a better idea of what I was doing later. Um, that suspicion would turn out to be right, but we'll talk about that more later on. At a certain point, I find that I've finished knocking out a lot of the easier clues, and I'm just left with either sections of the grid, like the bottom left, where I haven't made a lot of progress, or I have harder clues, such as 26 across. So when I find myself stuck at this phase of the game, that's when I start trying to do things like guess at what the end game is going to be uh, in order to help myself advance and progress further. So I designed giant neutromatic searches like this one um, with all of the letters that I have so far for the um, 26 normal clues and just see if there's anything that neutromatic can give me uh, that's going to help me out. Sometimes it works. In this case, the phrase is too long. I wasn't having a lot of luck just doing this. But one thing that I did notice when I just looked at the green letters here myself is that we're very close to the word isolated towards the start of this. Basically, I looked in uh, the sections where I was missing letters and said, yeah, there's an L pretty close to the beginning of 19. Um, so there's a chance that, you know, we're going to get an L for isolated from there. And there's a T towards the beginning of 26. The answer that I had in mind for 26 across is the word redressal, and it means an act of compensation. Guessing that I was trying to spell the word isolated kind of confirmed that this was definitely the right answer for me because there's three vowels and that would then index into the clue to get us the letter T. I would later figure out, for those that are curious, that the parse on this one, um, a rye girl is a lass. One definition of rye that I didn't expect, and it's what took me the longest time to see the reversal, is twisted or turned to one side. So rye is saying to do stuff backwards in this clue. Girl is lass, and then a um, person driving cattle with no aspiration is a herder without that first letter H. I remember struggling a lot with the lower left corner of the grid, as well as the upper right. Those were the two biggest problem areas. And I remember the big penny drop moment when this puzzle went from feeling particularly challenging to get the last few pieces came around the point that I guessed um, the second word of the phrase. So I was pretty sure isolated was at the beginning. When I, somewhere around the point that I had these letters um, towards the end of the across clues, I said, what if it's an isolated system? That could be something that could uh, be a description of the whole puzzle and a principle that it obeys. I wasn't 100% sure what this last word was going to be, but when I went over to Neutromatic and got rid of the letters assuming that system is correct, I found that there were a couple of good word options um, that could come at the end. Conservation especially, uh, a conserved system stood out as being potentially possible. Actually, I just realized I made a mistake. Part of the problem with recording this a week later is I forgot some subtle pieces of myself. Um, I actually didn't have a C initially for two down because a plenty only has one conventional vowel, A. I originally extracted the letter A for that. So that's why I was able to actually get isolated in system a lot earlier than I got conservation because I hadn't extracted the right letter there. It was only towards the end here when I was starting to get everything else together that I said, man, this would make a lot more sense if this A was something else. And that's when I realized that uh, they were counting the Y as an additional vowel here, so I should actually be extracting the C from um, Academy. Somewhere around this point is also when I realized that if this was conservation, then excitedness would let me extract the V from very. Um, so I marked this as a normal clue with bats just being the uh, anagram indicator. Eventually I had answers that I was pretty confident in for all of the normal clues and I had extracted the phrase isolated system conservation. I knew that the letters that we were adding and removing from clues were supposed to give thematic properties according to the instructions. And so at this point when I had the rough theme idea, 
I decided to start looking at some of those letters to see if there were any properties that stood out to me. The added letters that I had so far were Y, E, and G, and when I think of um, conservations within an isolated system, one of the biggest things that uh, we always talk about in physics is energy being conserved in this way. But it was while I was going through and looking for those missing letters for energy that I actually had another penny drop moment with 35 down. 35 down's clue is I retain lawyer court holds property right. And we have the letter pattern C blank I blank T. I knew that a property right is a lien, L-I-E-N, it shows up a lot in crosswords, and court is very often abbreviated C-T. So just thinking about this clue and briefly forgetting the, the length of the word is five letters long, I realized that the answer to this clue is probably client, because a client is somebody who retains a lawyer, and it's a lien within CT, which is court. Since I only have five spaces to put client in, I realized that we were probably just removing a letter between the I and the T, either the E or the N. And uh, we remember that the instructions tell us that we will always be left with real word grid entries. So to me, it made sense that Clint would probably be filled in here rather than C-L-I-E-T. So for this adjusted entry, 35 down, we removed an E before the answer could be put into the grid. And the penny drop moment that I had was saying, ah, yes, E stands for energy in physics. So I said, maybe we're just going to be removing a lot of E's from words. Um, in order to conserve the energy in the system. I said if we're adding six energies to clues, maybe we're removing six energies from answers in order to isolatedly conserve the system. And that guess turned out to be right, except I wasn't quite there, because I assumed we would always be using the letter E, short for energy, when in actuality, the adjustments are a little bit different. But in the meantime, I did realize another property that is commonly conserved in isolated systems is mass. And that is what our removed letters are spelling. So I knew I was pretty much just attempting to solve the adjusted clues at this point and to figure out you know, how these answers are all being adjusted as they get entered into the system. I think the final penny drop moment for me came with 18 down. Uh, we only have E blank ER, and the clue is moth smugglers half cut. I eventually discovered that the smuggler being referred to in this clue is a bootlegger, and we cut half of it, the first half, to be left just with egger, which is another word for a moth. When I saw this, I realized that the answer that we needed to enter into 18 down is E-G-E-R, and so what we actually removed this time was G. So while my guess of having to add the letters for energy into the clues and then remove energy from the answers that are adjusted, while that was a correct guess, we weren't always removing an E for energy, we were actually removing the letters for energy again. So we've removed an E here and a G here. We need to adjust uh, four more entries before going into the grid by removing N-E-R-Y. And when I realized this, I realized that since we removed the letters for mass from clues, we probably needed to add the letters for mass into several of our uh, words that go into the grid, four of our words that go into the grid. And when I had that realization, 36 down suddenly made a lot more sense to me because I had noticed early on that profit probably meant gain, G-A-I-N, but I couldn't figure out the rest of the clue because I was pretty sure the answer was again, um, but I couldn't find a definition. It turns out that the actual answer to this clue is just gain. Gain is a dialect word in the dictionary that means convenient. And so in order to enter this into the diagram, we have to add one of the letters from mass that we removed from the clue, specifically the A. The answer to 45 across of photographer's die is actually cyanide except we have to remove the Y in order to conserve energy, and so K9 is what gets entered into the grid. For 37 across, a Scottish word for a child is a C-H-I-E-L, child, except that doesn't fit in the grid because we have to add an S to get the word chisel. And I remember this being kind of the end state of the puzzle for me, these being the last uh, four clues that I had to really figure out and solve. And I remember thinking it was humorous that I was missing um, clues where I had to insert 
an N and an R, and I was missing answers where I had to remove an N and an R. It was kind of like the whole isolated system of conservation was forcing me to this state where I couldn't figure out the N or the R on either side until they were the only things left to do. I had seen for a long time that a possible answer for 31 down was um, N-A-E-V-U-S, Navis. It's a mark on the skin, and I realized that, you know, we have mark on ski here, so uh, that could very likely be a place where we needed to add an N. I just was having a lot of trouble uh, with the wordplay on this, and I'm still not 100% sure that I know what the wordplay on this is. And I saw that the two answers for six down were either adios or agios, A-G-I-O-S, and I kind of liked that second one better because it means discounts, but I could not figure out what the wordplay was here until eventually I discovered that pence can be abbreviated D. So this is saying we have to change a D into a G in the word late, except late by itself doesn't mean adios, which is the word we need to change the D from, but if we add an R to the end, later, as in see you later, could mean adios. So that's where our missing R is. I was finally able to solve 11 across. Uh, the word that goes into the grid is spangle, but the clue actually resolves to the word sprangle. And lastly, we have 28 down, cavalry soldier's leader gone in a flash. For a while, I was looking at this letter pattern and thinking about a lancer, somebody who uses a lance. But then I realized, thanks to a Chambers Dictionary lookup, that lance by itself can mean the weapon, or it could mean a person using it. So the cavalry soldier can just be a lance. So lance is the answer to that clue, and lace is what actually goes into the grid there. And that one's kind of interesting because it could have been lane, L-A-N-E, if somebody hadn't completely parsed how the isolated system was working and realizing that they needed to uh, remove the letter N there. So there are a couple of tricks like that built into the puzzle to verify that whoever's solving it is actually understanding the full context of what they're doing. And speaking of the full context, don't forget that the original name of this puzzle is Don't Get M Wrong. Don't get E and M wrong. Energy and mass is right up there in the title of the puzzle. So I thought that was a pretty clever realization that I didn't have until after finishing the puzzle. Overall, I really enjoyed this puzzle. I do think the clues were maybe on the easier side when it comes to a listener crossword puzzle. I'm not completely sure. I, I only say it's easier because I managed to finish it in less than 24 hours. And when that's the case, it's usually an easier crossword puzzle uh, than is normal for the listener. There were definitely clues I struggled with, don't get me wrong, there are still a couple clues that I don't fully understand, but I really enjoyed the um, meta moment on this one of figuring out this final phrase and what it means and what you're conserving and what you're doing and how it's being represented in this puzzle. It was a lot of fun and I really enjoyed uh, putting it all together. So let me know what you think about this listener crossword puzzle and let me know what you think about this video as a whole. Is this something that you want to see more of? Sound off in the comments for sure, just with any thoughts that you have about uh, the puzzle or the video because I'd love to hear about them and chat more down there with you. So I think that wraps up everything for me here. Until next time, I hope that everybody has a great day. Thank you again for 500 subscribers and as always, happy escaping. Bye!